Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And, and remember, the interesting thing about the home care as opposed to the nursing home care is that re, while nursing home care, you are confined or you are limited to or a patient is limited to 100 days of care during any period of illness, these 60-day home care plans can literally go forever. Now, forever used to be really limited by the fact that, well, it would only continue as, until you would, were no longer getting better. So the 60-day home care plans tended to be much more limited. Now, they could literally go on forever. Um, and one of the interesting things, and I see Julie from the, the uh, Alzheimer's Association, one of the interesting things about that is, is the extent to which this could impact you know, my typical patient, my typical client. My typical client uh, is talking to an elder lawyer because uh, they've got Alzheimer's, uh, or they've got a deteriorating disease, um, and therefore they're not being covered by Medicare. Medicare covers all major diseases except Alzheimer's. Um, and, and so for those folks, this may be a, make a big difference because of course these patients are patients who are not getting better, kind of by definition. They're, we're hoping that they're staying the same, typically, or we're hoping to at least slow down their rate of deterioration. So for them, Medicare could be a really big deal. Now, the, the, <clears throat> the interesting thing about the, uh, this though, when you read the manual, and I would encourage you to read the manual if you are in this field so that you can understand this, is that you could almost see Medicare saying to themselves, well, we know this is going to cost us some money, right? Because we're really kind of changing the rules here. So the question is, how can we save some money someplace else? And so what they have done, uh, both for nursing home patients and for home care patients, is increase the level of documentation that has to be provided uh, for you to document the need for home care. And I'm going to give you two examples. Uh, in, the, in the section of the manual that deals with, um, that deals with uh, home care, uh, it is specified that you need to be documenting in every case for every visit made by the nurse to the home there needs to be documentation of the history of the case, of what happened during that visit, of how the patient responded to that visit, and why it is that at the end of that visit, you, the professionals, think that care is still needed. And that needs to be documented in, in what they say are non-vague ways. For example, um, they, even give you, they even give you some, some uh, examples of words that they will no longer accept. And now I'm trying to find what those words are. Um, they'll no longer accept what they refer to as kind of code words like patient tolerated treatment well or caregiver, caregiver instructed in medication management, kind of a one-liner, or continue with POC, continue with the plan of care. They're no longer going to accept in the documentation section these kinds of standard lines that they've typically been seeing. They really want to have documentation now regarding whether the person that you're seeing at home or that you're seeing in the nursing home is really needing to continue care. So the good news is as a result of GMO, there are a lot more patients who are, who are potentially eligible because all you have to show is that they need care in order to stay the same or to keep from getting worse. They no longer have, have to be having to get better, right? The bad news is that not only for those cases, but for all cases in which home care or home health agencies are involved, the level of documentation that me Medicare is now saying that they want has just gone up. And I don't know of anybody that's been talking about that. There's been some discussion. How many people heard of Jimmo before they came here today? Could you raise your hand? Not many. So there are some people that have been talking about GMO and the advantages of it. No one's been mentioning that there's a reasonable chance here that a lot more people are going to get knocked off because of this need for more documentation. So what I, what I, the reason why I asked Linda Sullivan and Deb Gittner to, to come today was to, to think about some actual cases. Can we kind of roll, we're going to roll through some, some uh, slides. Next slide. We're going to roll through several. We're going to roll through them slowly. Um, 
keep, oh, they, they, th those are the lawyers that won, the Center for Medicare Advocacy. You have this information, by the way. I interviewed those people uh, in Connecticut. If you want to know more about that, I have a YouTube channel which we uploaded this, to which we uploaded this program. You may be interested in seeing that. Next slide. Uh, we're going to, we're just, we're just, we're running past these slides. Keep going. Um, for, we're, tomorrow we're doing a similar presentation to a set of nursing home administrators in our offices in Worcester. We're doing the, the nursing home administrators from um, Worcester and Montachusett area. Uh, and we're talking specifically to them about one of the, the concerns they have. Many of the nursing homes are kind of aware of this case, uh, but they are, but they, keep on going, but they are scared to death of it. Uh, they are scared to death to actually change the folks that they are keeping in the nursing home because they're concerned the way that they get funded, actually just like the way the VNA gets funded, hold it, hold it there. The way the VNAs get funded uh, is they'll do it, they'll, 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 they'll apply. In the case of the VNAs, they'll, they'll file an OASIS form and they'll get a part, part of their payment up front and then the rest of their payment after the 60 days. But then, but then six months from now, uh, CMS may do an audit and they may just notify the VNA, oh, I see somebody nodding their head and they'll just kind of say, well, we want to see cases A, B, C, and D. Uh, <coughs> we want to see those records and you send them those records and they'll say, well, based on those records, um, we think that we, miss, we incorrectly paid you for A and C and therefore we're going to reduce the check that we're sending you this month by that amount of money. Of course, having a significant effect on cash flow, right? And then if they've pulled several and they think that there, was, there, that, there were, that there are problems with a number of them, they may come in and just audit all of your, your stuff. And the concern among the nursing homes, and I'm sure among the VNAs will be, if there's a complete audit, they're auditing everything. They're not just auditing to check whether you're complying with GIMO. They want to know if you're complying with Stark, if you're complying with a whole bunch of federal regulations. So we're just going to be talking to those nursing home owners about what those other regulations are. That, I, I don't do that, but we actually have a, a, a health policy group um, at Monarch O'Connell that does all of that, so we're talking to them about that. So, these are cases that Deb and Linda developed, um, that Linda developed, <laughs> says that. <laughs> so I'd like you to talk about the cases, talk about the effect that this, that Jimmo might have, you know, give, give a sense, if you could, about documentation issues, right? And then we'll take questions on that case, and then we'll just roll to the next case. There are three cases. But we want to use the cases as a way to have a conversation if there are people that want to talk about a specific case. Okay. Linda. Hello, everybody. Um, I think in this particular case, <coughs> we were trying to decide this woman is at, was at home prior to going into the hospital, and the goal was to get her back home. On the pre-GMO um, Medicare, she met the standard. She had her three-night qualifying stay. She required the skilled services. So she was going to go home with those skilled services. And prior to GMO, she would have been on skilled services if she had gone home. She would have got um, the skilled PT to work with her because, again, she was a below-the-knee below amputee who was using a um, prosthetic, and she was um, needed to get back into walking with that prosthetic because the issue was a wound, and we need to make sure the pressure, she can still walk and move around so she isn't constantly sitting all the time. Uh, also, the documentation of the wound, which is key always in Medicare documentation, you needed the depth, the size, the consistency, the surrounding tissue, all that was there. I think under the new GMO, the biggest thing for this woman was she would have probably, post-hospital, got the VNA in to do skilled services, probably would have got maybe six weeks, I'm saying with the wound, for pending progression and no further infection, antibiotics, um, and the teaching. Well now, I see this woman as she's never going to progress to better. Um, we want to maintain and make sure that the deterioration is slow. I think the key thing here is going to be for the geriatric care manager and for the home cares that gets involved, is you're going to need to be reviewing that documentation 
because it is so key that you're looking at what the BNA is writing, and I'm sure the BNA is right up on top of all these changes because their cash flow depends on, on them getting reimbursed. And with this, she's got many, many things from the extended wound care. She also needs teaching and training, which was very slight in, in perspective to what it is now for training the daughter to do the wound dressing. The difference with GEMO is the professional skilled nurse is coming in to oversee that it is not still infected, that the skin is starting to look like it's going back to where it was prior to the infection. She had seen it prior because she did have DNA services. But the nurse has now got to document why it's important for her to come in and oversee. And one of the biggest statements that I think I got from reading the manual is it's all falling on the individual's unique condition and complexity of the medical needs that will drive her stay on Medicare. And you're going to have to show that in your documentation how unique this woman is. She's legally blind. She has insulin that has to be taken. She has an amputation. She needs to get back on the prosthetic. She has numerous um, issues with um, the wound, which had been there. So all of these things are skilled services, but they all are going to have to be documented. So this is just one of the cases that we felt kind of showed a broad range of, of different things that you do run into in the home. And, and Linda, just hold this case for a second. One of the other pieces about this, is, you know, going back to some of the comments that I, that I had made, is that every time that nurse shows up, if she's training that daughter to be taking care of her mother on, in wound care, as, it, unless she can show that the ongoing, in, in each case that she's there, that the ongoing monitor of that daughter the next time is going to be necessary, because there is this risk that in the meantime, there might be an infection, the mother's t condition might deteriorate. So there's a real reason why the nurse has to come back. Unless she's documenting that each time, she's going to get, the, you know, the VNA may get hit at the end. Right. right. And you absolutely have to make sure that the physician's order is in place, the plan of care is updated according to what you're writing in your documentation. Because all of these things will be looked at in an audit. Uh, from what I'm understanding, the audits will be fast and furious. And they are looking to see that you've got all these pieces in your documentation. And just, just like anything else when you were doing Medicare, documentation was always what ran people on Medicare, but it was always what took them off in an audit. So if you remember that, that's key. I think now it's just showing the uniqueness and the complexity of the person. I'm yes? So if, I doc, if I just have one quick, so if, I, if you document that, mm -hmm. it's unique because she's blind, like your short daughter, mm -hmm. the nursing can continue to go in until that bandage is off, or you have got to be able to get it past? No, we're not looking for it to get better. Okay. We're looking to maintain or to prevent decline. The infection was a complication of the wound, which set her whole physical okay. condition spiraling. Oh, okay. 